but there's a reason I'll tell you this, and it'll be, I'll reveal it later, that I'm not a professional speaker either, but um, when Gretchen asks, you know, and I, I actually, we came up with a, a strategy that, that, that I had to kind of like put my money where my mouth is, you know, for so anyway, I'm up here. And um, how many of you have heard of caucuses and know what they are? You know, um, they've been around a while in the country, and we've all heard about them. But I didn't realize that in Georgia, they had not existed for until recently. Actually, it was um, maybe 2010, maybe 2011, something like that. But it was um, one of the very first state meetings that I went to, and they were introducing all the chairs the newly elected chairs of the African American, Latino, Asian, Asian, and, 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 and there's a lot of other ones in there. The disability, LGBT. Um, there was another one, and I can't remember what it was, and then the more recent ones are the Veterans Caucus, the Rural Caucus, the Senior Caucus, and as of this year, after five years of working very hard and pushing and arm twisting, we have the Environmental Green Caucus. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. So, caucuses, um, I guess they have different purposes. People have different ideas of what caucuses are for. But I think um, you can probably imagine because each one of them is specific, that it, it kind of narrows down a little bit what, what your maybe top issue is of why you're a Democrat. Um, my top issue is environment, and I care about health care, I care about immigration, I care about jobs, I care about all the other things that you care about, and I am here to try to convince you that every other Democratic issue is somehow influenced by the environment. Um, you can, we can get specific on all of those, but just take that for, for what it is. That's not the, really the topic of my discussion today. When um, we finally convinced the party that we needed an environmental green caucus. I kind of knew instinctively that they would want to know what we could do for the party as well. And I'm sure that's really what every caucus has to decide too, what, what they can offer the party. And I think it is, it is bringing people to the party and giving them reasons to come and, and be a part of the party as Democrats. A lot of people call themselves Democrats, and then you ask them how they vote, they say, oh, 90% Democrat, or I'm a Democrat, or this and that. But being a member of your county committee, being a member of your state committee, working for candidates on a, on a campaign, those are totally different levels of being a Democrat. And running, oh well, I won't even get into running. That that that's a different animal altogether. Running for office, um, those people, those people need to be thanked and, and pro, by every single one of us because they, to be to put yourself up for attack, whew, boy, that's I I've had a little taste of that and I didn't like it. <laughs> just just being just. Saying that I was an environmentalist is enough to be attacked for, believe me. Um, but getting back to what we, a strategy we came up with to try to to show the party what we could do for them is we had to come up with kind of a strategy. And just like has been mentioned here earlier tonight, everything is local. Politics is local, and environmental issues are local. Um, I think environment boils down to any one of you would be more aware 
of the environmental threats in your backyard. Now you may hear about threats in somebody else's backyard, even in other backyards in Georgia, but you are going to care mostly and more passionately about the issues that happen in your backyard, whether it's your clean water, whether it's your clean energy, whether it's something threatening your clean air. Um, so, our strategy, and this, this will get to the crux of my speech tonight, is actually an ask of you as Democrats in Lowndes County. And those of you especially who may be members of your Lowndes County Democratic Committee. Our strategy decided that we needed to, you know, a lot of people just looked to us and said, oh, now we have a caucus. Now all our environmental things are going to be handled. I said, no, we don't really have the answers. The answers to the environmental problems are the same as the answers to other democratic challenges that we have. We have to get together, we have to learn how to organize, and we have to work on them. And just because it's more important and passionate for you to care about what's happening in your backyard, our strategy became then how do we make small groups of people around the state, and so the strategy came to us is let's try to contact individuals who may be on, let's say start with the larger, and I, I consider Lowndes County Democrats, but considering how many people I'm seeing sitting out here, it's a, it's a fair sized committee. I don't know how many members you have, but um, I'm from a rural county in Effingham, which, by the way, is the very northern county in the first district and I think Lowndes County might be the very southern county in the first district. I don't know, is Lowndes County divided in half? What? Oh, okay. Effingham is divided in half. Half of it's in the 12th, half of it's in the 1st. And I have recently moved to Chatham County, which of course is the seat of Savannah, and that is a big one. That's probably the second biggest to Atlanta. So um, I have my my work cut out for me there. But um, of course, being in close by there, I always do a little bit. But what we want, and this is what I told Malva Stepp. She's another DPG staffer. Malva, yeah, and she she decided that she liked this idea of us getting a liaison, a named person from, let's work on every Democratic committee that there is. There isn't one in every county in Georgia, but let, we're going to start with the bigger ones and, and wherever, wherever a passionate environmentalist is on a Democratic committee, we're going to look for a liaison. Now, let me back up just a little bit because I need somebody else too, and especially from this area. We had about seven people in the five or six year fight, or hmm, I shouldn't use that word. Uh, that's the word we used ourselves, but um, I'm trying to convince or become recognized as a caucus. In the five or six years it took us to accomplish that, a steering committee of very passionate environmentalists came together around the state. And several of them, as you would imagine, were in the Atlanta area, some of them in North Georgia, some of them in the coastal area, where a lot of the environmental threats happen. Of course, you've got a big one here, and there's other parts of the state that have different different particular things going on at different times that are threatening them. There are good things happening too. But I need somebody in this area and somebody in the Augusta area to go out and do what I'm doing, and that is attempting to speak to the different county committees and try, and now I think we have about 12 so far. And I think how, 
Sarah, how many county committees do you have? 130. So 12 is just scratching the surface of, of, of our goal of getting one liaison from every county committee. Now, some of them are pretty small, I'll admit. They probably only have two or three people. So, we, you know, our idea of that one is probably pretty far-fetched. But anyway, what we're looking for is one liaison. Now, when I talked to these 12 people, or they called me, and we were, and Melba put it out there that this is what our strategy was, and that's what we were looking for, these people said, well, what would a liaison do? So I had to strategize about that next. All right, I made it simple at first. You can do as much or as little as you want, really. And if you are in a county like Lowndes that already has the Sable Trail pipeline and already has a whole bunch of environmental activity going on, you can do a lot. But if you don't, you need to join our Facebook page, which is a caucus, a DPG caucus Facebook page, and at every county meeting, get on the agenda and give a two or three minute story. I have two for you today. Two stories, and they're good news stories. There is a lot of good news, even though um, he has done some things to um, defeat our past um, wins or our, our, you know, the, the positive things that we've done in the last eight years. Um, there are people who think that, at least in the energy realm and maybe even the healthy food realm or even the clean water realm, that there is nothing he can do to stop it. Uh, he may slow it down a little bit, but I think some of it is going to, and these two stories are going to convince you that maybe we have the power to um, determine our environmental future. One of them is a Democrat, Jimmy Carter. Who remembers Jimmy Carter? Yay! He had a story where he took part of his peanut farm and he put solar panels on it. Let me read you the first three paragraphs. Former President Jimmy Carter is no stranger to solar power. He was so taken with it during his presidency that he actually had solar panels installed on the roof of the White House. Ronald Reagan famously removed them because they didn't work. And Barack Obama had them put back up during his presidency. I'm assuming the current president doesn't know they're up there, so that's not telling. <laughs> All right, the second story I have is a little bit harder to explain. But it is in Georgia. It's in Athens, Georgia. We all know where Athens is. Um, and it has to do with the library. Apparently, and I'll, I'll try to paraphrase this as quick as I possibly can, there was a private um, company that was giving out grants, and the grants were $100,000 a piece. They went more than just the United States, but they took 90 applications, for, and they were going to give out two. And the two that won, one of them was in Detroit, I think, but one of them was this library in Athens, Georgia. And the $100,000 was to put solar panels on top of the library. Now, it was undoubtedly more than just saving money that, got, that won them this grant. And in the article that I read, they said that they were going to formulate a program that was going to be an educational program for students to teach them about solar energy, about the jobs and the careers that could be had in the solar energy realm. And so I can only imagine that they won this grant because of the 
of how they pr proposed this program and how they designed this program. Now, I, I hope, I hope, I, I truly hope that some of your minds are starting to churn a little bit with about how you can maybe apply for a grant like this. Investigate where a grant like this can be had. Figure out where a grant like this could be used in Lowndes County. And like I say, the liaison for your Democratic Committee, which I'm hoping that I will go home with a name today, <laughs> can help figure this out, or help come up with it, or dream it up. You know, because it's, it's people like us that are doing this. And this is the kind of thing that's going to push solar energy. Jimmy Carter is the kind of thing that's going to push solar energy. Jimmy Carter knows he's not going to wait for George Power to put solar panels out there and control how much they cost. He's going to do it. And this article says that he is powering half of his hometown of planes. Uh, I don't know the details, but you can Google it. How many Google in here? That's all? Oh, my we God. need the I'm internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm looking for two people. I'm looking for a liaison from the Lowndes County Democratic Committee, and I'm looking for anyone, anyone who thinks that they can get up and speak like I did, <laughs> which is nothing. Just you have to be willing to go to other county <laughs> committee meetings or their fundraising dinners like this, and I can make sure that you are invited, and so can Sarah, <laughs> and speak and try to get a liaison for our state caucus from every county that has a Democratic committee in Georgia. Now, I must tell you, this is catching on. I went to a senior caucus meeting in Chatham County by the guy who is the liaison to the senior state caucus. I think that we may even end up at the next Democratic fundraising dinner that you have here next year, maybe having a member of the Disabilities Caucus or the Veterans Caucus coming and asking you for a liaison to those caucuses too. So it's just another way that we can be Democrats. Thank you.